saying that we all are him, okay? And that's that's New Age nonsense. So Have no, you read no, the Bible no all by yourself? Nonsense. It's a lot. Have you read the Bible by yourself? Yes, most. I mean, Have you read? Look, there's only one interpreter of Scripture that has any authority, and that's the teaching church. Okay, there isn't. Right. So you have right, your, you have the Bible Peter, interpreted no, Peter, for you. Peter says right in the Scripture. Jesus told that, Peter, "Get no, me behind me, no, Satan." Peter, when Peter was following him, it doesn't matter. Law. It doesn't matter. He also said, "Feed my sheep." Tend my lambs and feed my lambs, okay? He was giving him the authority of the supreme shepherd of the universal church. So, but that's not my point. What you said, you said. No, I uh, asked you if you, you have read Peter, the Bible all by yourself, said, and you have not. Peter, do you really need to kind of interrupt this here? It's going to kind of add a hand here. You are energy. You are. Yeah, but we're more than just energy, okay? Right, and that's what you were taught, to be entitled. You have to be somebody or else you're no thing. That's what attorney and priest teach you. But your physics say that you were before they gave you a name. You existed before somebody gave you the right to be. Now, you have a church you that is subjugating in the mind of you. God. Yeah, you exist in the mind of God before you exist, but you don't exist in any other realm before you're conceived. Conceived with thought, with thought. So What's that? you don't exist. You don't exist until somebody else thinks of you or allows you to have an existence, like an attorney. Uh, so God, the, the God Catholic is the one Church. That forms, Are you aware that the Catholic the that Church is a member the of the United Nations? God, Are you aware that the Catholic yeah, Church is, the is a member? God is the one that formed you in the womb. We cannot have argument here. Before you're born, you're Are only you aware you're where in the mind of God. Come from? What's happened is everybody's been taught to, to be patriotic. You're taught to be patriotic to a language, to your culture, to, quote, race, which it, it never was anything other than human. Um, and, and so you, within that patriotism, you go and fight their wars for them. You know, he knows he was a puppet. He knows he was speaking about the mistakes that were made when he went into Iraq. These... These monsters, this is Satan, the adversary. Adversary, it's Satan always meant adversary. And so you have this, this entity indoctrinating everybody, and including myself. I was, I was a patriot just as much as anybody else. I've got so many veterans in my family tree. And, and, um, but, but when you get back to the absolute truth, and you, you no longer accept what somebody else fills you up with, or your constitution created by um, indoctrination, then you you have your soul. You're you're allowing your yourself to be whole, and you're allowing yourself to be fully alive at that time. You know, and that that's according to the Sestri Kevai Act. Just one moment, please. And we're, all of this is written. I'm not saying anything new. Um, you go to the Sestri Kevai Act of 1666. Notice what that number is, 1,666. Uh, when you're lost at sea and, and somebody else is administering you, isn't that, is that not the mark of the beast? You know, and what is the resurrection of man or the son of man? To resurrect something means to make it stand again. It doesn't mean to bring it back to life. What you're doing is you're, you're allowing yourself to live. You're taking your authority back and you're self-governing. You're no longer accepting another father, and that's what Jesus was trying to tell us. Don't accept another father. Be the father. Walk according to the truth. You don't mind if I make a comment? Not at all. Not at all. Um, the way we perceive things shapes our own reality, and you know, so therefore, perception is reality. What they've done through policy and through the public education system is they've equipped us with blinders. They have us all looking the same direction, looking at the same things they place in front of us. This is consensus reality. It is very important to just keep an open mind and shed your blinders and take a look around. Accept that what you've been taught may not necessarily be the truth and just open yourself up to other possibilities. That's all I wanted to say. Thank you, brother. Be well. 
May I ask something? Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, where do I find documents that uh, relate to your discussion tonight on what you're talking about? Where can I locate documents of this nature? Every one of them are out there. Um, the Sister Kubiak, let me get it up real quick. Hello. You were, ta you were talking about reclaiming uh -huh. the soul. Where's that document? Absolutely. What you're going to do is you're going to admit life. That's reclaiming your, your authority. So okay. the Sestri Kivai Act is a motion to show cause life, and it, it tells you in there, because you haven't claimed life or you haven't shown that you're alive, you're still lost at sea. That's Article 1. Now, Article 4 says that once you claim life and you do that in an action, well, the title's revested. Well, what's your title? Isn't that I am? Because you were, you were a being before, before they impeded your walk, before they took all of your land, before they, they, they started leasing and parting you out. This is part and parcel. You've been parted out and you've been copyrighted and, and um, you have a patent on your name. You cannot put a patent on ground because it's old. You can't put a patent on it. So when you're born, you get those are, that, that is the patents on intellectual property. That is you, the earth, Jesus, which means your earth, you know. The Sestra K. Vi Act is located at www.legislation.gov.uk forward slash AEP forward slash capital CHA2 forward slash 18 dash 19 forward slash 11. And you can read the entire act. You want to go through all of it. Please read the whole thing. It is not very long. My admission statements relating to the act, you can find those at solutions for the number four, the innocent dot wordpress dot com. I'm also on Facebook. Uh, you can also add me to Skype if you want to discuss this further, and I can show you where um, the separation of the, the spiritual and the temporal. If you go to Yale Avalon Project, just Google Yale Avalon Project, and go to the Avalon Project, which is Yale's law library, you can look up any one of these acts. You can okay. look up the ordinance of William the First, ordinance of separating the spiritual and the temporal. Um, the the newest ones, you know, the the ones that are revising all of this, you want to look at as well, such as the Atlantic Charter, the Master Land Lease Agreement that Churchill and Roosevelt signed. Um, everything's there. Just start start reading. You you should research everything. You want to know everything. Go all the way back to the laws of the kings. Go all the way back to the Twelve Tables at Nicaea, because that's where they established UCC or the ability of the state to parent you and move you around. You know, Jesus had maintained that this only lasts three days. He'll rise again in three days. This happens to be the third time that this has been implicated against us. And those laws are in the 12 tables as well. It says the father, a father, a father shall sell his child three times until the father puts a stop to it. And then this is written in, uh, I think it's article, it's article four of the 12 tables and those can be found on Avalon.com or, or it's the Yale Library, the Yale's Law Library at Avalon. Um, you'll find that again repeated in the, in the Laws of the Kings. These are fully available to you at, at Yale's Law Library. Everything, it's open access for anybody. You can go through document collections. You can go through um, date by date. Uh, these are also in the treaties. If, if you're more into reading, if you want more substance, you can read the treatise on mortgage hypothecation and pledges, which tells how you are hypothecated and turned into a thing. You know, this is where you're turned into a deed rather than the will of God. The will of God is an action. It is a deed, a thing done. However, when you're hypothecated and turned into a thought and then you're put on a piece of paper, that becomes a deed as you know it. That's just a piece of paper. These things are all written. You want to look at the, the treatise on guarantee insurance. You are the guarantee. Read these books. It says exactly what your title is. Um, you so, want the so, treatise so, on... So through all their, all their work and all their writings throughout the century, we have not been there to dispute it. 
absolutely not. And and the, the majority of that was, was implicated when you were already subjugated. You know, when you, when you come to this country and, and you have a, a something written in 1776, the, the Declaration of Independence and all this crap, and you look at the Bill of Rights, that's a bill of, in the nature of a Bill of Reviver, reviving the Cestry Act. But what does it say? If I went up to you right now, if you and I were face-to-face, and I told you, sir, you have the right to speak now, wouldn't you laugh at me? I mean, that's something ridiculous, right? Uh, But they didn't do that. But they didn't do that before. They didn't do that before. They accepted it. So at one point, your, your voice had to have been silenced in order for you to accept the right to free speech. And you're you know, saying the, the, best, the, the best way to be in contact with you is through Facebook? It's Skype. I prefer Skype as well. We do a lot of Skype classes. We do jurisdictionary classes. Um, my Skype address is just T, the letter T, Pepperman, P-E-P-P-E-R-M-A-N. And we do the classes throughout the day. Just tell me what your issue is, and then we'll throw you in a class. Um, Outstanding. Tammy, I've been trying to um, contact you on Skype and to find out where these classes are held, and I've been unsuccessful. Okay, what what is your name? Patricia. Is I'm that Skype your name on Skype? I'm Bergen the County on, on Skype. Oh, I think I put you in boot camp, but I will put you in um, the basic, and I'll do that right now as soon as I find you. There you are. To understand, folks, that there's been a uh, huge, uh, huge amount of people that have wanted to, you know, participate in learning this stuff. So, you know, it, it, it sometimes it comes undaunting when you're putting in 18, 20 hours a day to try and keep keep up with everything. So, you know, one has experienced that many times, and I know for a fact that Tammy's going through that right now. So, patience is. Patience is a okay. virtue. If you can get the documents, start start reading them, and et cetera, et cetera. Yep, and you're you're now with the basic training and the. It was um, first. Ber- so you found me, Bergen the County. Uh huh. So oh, thank I you. I did. You're now with the basic. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, may I make a comment? Hello. I'd yes. like to ask your question, if I may. Yes, please. Um, you. <laughs> You've been talking about private versus public law, and I understand that um, the UCC is private law, and I think you had said that that statutes were private law. Now, I've been trying to do the research, and um, I contacted the the New Jersey um, Law Library, and Mm -hmm. I asked uh, this researcher there uh, about private and public law, and he said that since 1844, they um, when they put the new constitu- the constitution, um, that they stopped doing. Must, I think it was public law, and now and they, they do did. both together. And he said, just hard to tell which is which. Well, so you I'm like have a little to confused. Distinguish. Well, no, don't be confused. So now, when they stop using public law, that that's what I've been trying to explain. In the constitution. They only have sovereignty if they're adhering to the public trust, if they're adhering to public law. Okay, so New Jersey, prior to 1844, when they were adhering to public law, they were a sovereign state. Now New Jersey, and every county in New Jersey, is foreign nations because they're acting under a private acts and act of commerce. These, these entities, these foreign nations, are injurious to the United States. They don't have any immunity whatsoever. So whatever they're doing against you under statutory authority, it has nothing, no authority whatsoever, and they can be indicted. They are naked. They're, they're bare. They are laid wide open. There is not one state in the United States anymore that has sovereignty. Sovereignty. Not one. They're all foreign nations acting against the United States because they're not upholding the public trust. They're not upholding public law. But they're still getting public funds. What is the, the difference between public trust and public policy? Public policy, mm. it regards corporate policy. This is for them. The, the corporations has nothing to do with you. 
that's an insurance policy. That insurance their bottom dollar. It doesn't protect you, and it's not holding you in the public trust any longer. They're no longer holding to, uh, upholding the public law. There is not one sovereign state in the country you know as the United States. They are all foreign nations against injurious to the United States. And they're all to be held accountable, and that's what we're doing now. You have to hold them accountable. Nobody else is going to. Once you start indicting them, then then they step in because they know that they've made a mistake. You make them look in the mirror, they're going to cannibalize each other. Why? Because either, one, the contract is broken and we aren't going to pay for this anymore because we're not going to pay a wolf to watch chickens. Well, that's, that's impossible, right? You know, they, they have to facilitate something. Or they're going to uphold the public trust and become sovereign again. Because if they don't, then they're shit out of luck. They've lost their corporate charters. They've lost everything, and it all becomes mine and yours. They're all operating in the private. Absolutely. And, and acts of commerce. I mean, they're, they're not doing anything that's according to the public trust. Now you're getting run by McDonald's. I'm sorry, Tammy. You're getting run by McDonald's. Say that again. It's like being run by McDonald's. Yes, or Walmart. Or Walmart. And, that, and that's, that's what I ask people. Can Walmart arrest you? Here's a corporation with a sheriff. You know, just because they have the name of a sheriff, they can't arrest you. They can't do anything. That's kidnapping. Hold them accountable. Hold them accountable. What they're doing is they're kidnapping you to generate revenue under statutory authority. It has yep. nothing to do with public law. Exactly. That's how they've lost their immunity. Oh, well, they have no authority. They have no jurisdiction. And they have no... Absolutely. They also don't have any immunity. Go, go back to the Commerce Clause of the Constitution. It says Congress can implicate all of these acts of, Cong or acts of commerce and private acts, but these four nations are not sovereign. They're without immunity if they're acting under them. I mean, it, they got free will just as much as we did. God gave you free will. And he said, go out there, go, go do whatever you want to, but if you harm a human being, you're going to be held accountable. <laughs> they got the same thing from their god, Mardu, when he said, you go ahead, you can write or do anything you want to under private acts and acts of commerce, but if you get caught, you're screwed. You have no immunity and you've lost your sovereignty. Remember, uh, acts of God are not insurable. Read Absolutely. Any read any insurance policy. There's Absolutely. always a disclaimer in every insurance policy. An act of God is not insurable. Absolutely. And every one is an act of God. Their insurance does not cover that liability. Well, we're act Absolutely. of God. Act Absolutely. God. And, that, that's and that's why, why we are not to... insurable. Absolutely. Only a person is insurable. Their Only if you claim the title. Insurable. Right, Correct. and you have to claim that title in order for you to be that fiction. You have to say, well, I'm here. No, you don't even have to show up in court. You know, the, the most horrifying thing is, is to hear somebody, well, I've, I've got a summons, I've got to show up in court. You can only summon the dead. You can only summon the dead. This is conjuring with, with law the dead, summoning the dead, conjuring. This is what a mag magician does. And if you co go into court and answer a summons, what are you saying? You're saying, here I am, I'm a dead thing. You're acknowledging yourself as a dead thing each and every time you answer the summons. Don't answer that. Appear by evidence. When you put yourself on evidence, every time they open that court record, you're there. You're omnipresent again. Your will is on court record. They can no longer do this. They can no longer harm you. They can no longer harm your children. They can no longer send you off to war because there's no reason to. They lost. It's over. Game over. All we had to do was adhere to the truth. That was our only obligation, is to speak the word of God, walk the word of God. That's it. It's not hard. It's just not as easy as getting welfare benefits or, or adhering to consensus reality where I'm never fat or bloated or anything else, and my butt's never big, whatever else. You're not even allowed to tell me these things. You're not allowed to call me stupid if I do a stupid thing. Because you don't offend my ego. Show me the injury to my ego. Show me the bruises. You know, if you, if you blast through a, a stoplight and you haven't killed anybody but you almost did, 
that's still not a crime because you didn't. They cannot arrest you just in case. Crime under public law can only occur to a human being. A human being. And that human being must be harmed. Physically harmed or killed. You cannot harm an ego. You cannot harm a fence post. You cannot harm a tree. You cannot harm a a piece of grass or, or harm a building. We have gone so far away from God. Everybody can sue everybody. Everybody can sue everybody. Stop this. Jesus says in 1 Corinthians 6, if you go read that, he says this. Why aren't you the judge? Don't you know that we judge? Why are you going to law with your brother? And again in Matthew, I mean, he went off on Peter. He was so pissed at Peter for sprouting out man's law. This is Marduk. He said, get me behind me, Satan. He was pissed. So what the hell are you doing? And then when they were talking about the judge Moses, and they were saying, how wonderful Moses is. How does, how does Moses grant a writing of divorce? Only a judge can do a court order. And Jesus was telling them and trying to explain to them, who baptized John? Was that man or God? Well, it was man, right? And they came spouting, spouting how wonderful Moses was. And what did Jesus say? Jesus maintained that Moses was pretty much blowing flowers out of his butt. He said, God is not the God of the dead. He's the God of the living. What the hell are you doing listening to that black robe devil? You know, and he was so pissed. When he was spouting, whoa, he was telling him, you're sitting on the right hand of Moses. What the hell are you doing? You're supposed to be at the right hand of God. And he also Why said, I... take, take up your cross and follow me. And follow me, and that's just the word of God. Jesus means your earth in Latin. G-E space S-U-I-S. That's just you. Follow your truth. You speak the truth. You walk the truth. They tell you you don't so that they can prey on you because they can pretend to be your protector. You've accepted another father. Don't go to another father. And, and, you have and, your own authority. Mm -hmm. and, and, Tammy, that's the basis of saying to these so-called judges, why are you attempting to arrogate this estate? Okay. Everyone needs to look up the definition of the word arrogate. That's taking on another father. So, so that man in that's called a judge is acting as the father to your estate, and he's right. arrogating that estate. So ask because you're him, allowed are you, by your... Yeah, exactly. So ask that man or that woman, why are you attempting to arrogate this estate? You have no authority to arrogate this estate. Right. What are we doing here? And that's what... That's what most people don't realize. You know, you're brought into court on false allegations, or especially on these foreclosures. You know, I, I've done so many of these. You demand the wedding signature. They never come back with the wedding signature. Okay, case over. You have me in court because what? You said we have breach of contract. Did you produce a contract? Well, no. Okay, case over. Now this is vexatious litigation. What the hell do you have me in court for? You said I breached a contract. You don't produce a contract. That's a requirement for you to bring me to court. You have to show me a contract. They can't do that. So why are we here? And that is the most integral thing that people have to realize. That is called implied color. So when, when somebody comes in and they're, and they're lying against you, they said, well, we have a breach of contract here. You know they don't have the wedding contract. You know the truth. However, they, they, the attorney starts playing games. I have five days to serve you under statutory law, and I know this big word, and this big word, and this big word, and look at this huge number. You will never go look that number up. You're not going to go look at that statute because you've been taught not to. So you become, you, you put yourself into a state of fear. Then you show up in court, and you give them jurisdiction by saying, I didn't do it. I didn't do it. I didn't do it. There's no evidence on court record. Not one speck of evidence. So you're just claiming that to the trier of fact up there sitting on the bench. And then the other attorney comes in with another act and he lays down a paper. You don't even notice that that paper that he laid down is like a book on, on houses in Mexico. It has nothing to do with the case. 
but it's a big book, and you're not going to read it because you've been taught not to. This is what they're doing. It's all one big play act. When bottom line, they came in suing you for breach of contract, the only thing you should have said is show me the contract. When they didn't show it to you, you have to indict them for vexatious litigation, fraud upon the court, and criminal contempt of court. Period. Stop playing this game. Don't enter into the Church of Baal. They are worshipping Marduk. And the sheriff is the bailer, or rather the bailee. Absolutely. Don't ever forget that. The sheriff is the bailee. And the judge is sitting up there with your title in his hand. This, these foreclosure things are not on real property. Read the documentation. It's on real estate. You are the real estate. You are your earth, Jesus. They don't want you to know that you are Jesus. That means your earth. Your earth has the patent on it. You cannot get a patent on the ground. The thing that you walk on is old. You can only patent new things. Those new things are you each and every time you're born. These are your estates. So when you're going into court and you think you're defending a foreclosure on your real property, you are not. Read the documentation. They are trading you, the negotiable instrument, the real estate. This is your estate that they are administering. That's why we've done the forgiveness doc. That's why we've done the executor appointment. When you come in as the executor of your own estate, they can no longer do this. Don't allow them to crucify you any longer. You're shown the Bible. Read the Bible all by yourself. Don't have it interpreted for you. It's all written, each and every word, and it's rewritten again in their law. Read Blackstone's commentaries. Um, read Emil, the, the um, treatise on education by Rousseau. Read Emil. It tells you how to break the human being and teach him to walk away from nature. Read these things. It's all written. Everything's there. All you have to do is start looking. Be inquisitive. Don't accept my word. Go find it. Accept your word. This is the word of God that I write. The truth. This is your word. They have perverted it. They have represented you. That's what an attorney does. That's what a judge does. They represent you. They don't represent you. Know yourself and your truth and the way that you walk. You are not bad. Stop earning the right to be and just be. I'd like, I'd like to make a little point real, real, real quick here. We've, we've been witnessing the collapse of the cabal in different forms, primarily in the financial side of it. We've witnessed uh, two, three people, Mr. Bob Diamond, the, uh, another gentleman, and of course the COO of Barclays Bank, who have resigned as a result of being fined of $442 million U.S. dollar Federal Reserve notes for the manipulation of the LIBOR fund. We see other, uh, other people who have been involved with the cabal uh, resigning their positions. There's three to four, six sometimes a day. Uh, whether or not these people are having a, uh, a revelation in their own minds of what, what they've been doing uh, or the fact that now they're getting caught, uh, but this, this perpetuation breeds a lot deeper than just the financial markets. This breeds all the way into our whole law form that has been adopted and usurped and stolen our freedoms from us. It's like this. Where in the hierarchy of agreements do I attach? Well, it goes like this. Yeshua, Yahweh, God, Buddha, Allah, whoever you might believe in as the supreme being or a tree, I'm not sure. Then it goes universe. Then it goes man, woman, child. Then beasts. Then corporations. What is the nature of the agreement upon which you believe I am operating? Well, they believe that we're operating in the sense that we are somehow debtor, subject class, slave, cytosans. So there's a lot of things going on in the year 2012. And I believe it's not only a vibrational frequency change, but also for the ability of our own minds and our eyes to be open to new things that seem to have a lot of merit to them, 
because we're witnessing the whole collapse. Now, if anybody has been following what the so-called derivative markets are on this planet, it's $1,312 trillion. You couldn't cut down every tree on every planet in the galaxy and come up with that much paper to pay off that debt. It's all been an illusion. The only things real in America, in this country, are the post office and the military. Everything has been <coughs> uh, conveniently arranged to keep us preoccupied with matters of little or no concern, to consume us, to make us consumers, which is just another word for a destroyer. This whole motivation about having this, the yuppie movement, having this car, this house, this thing, this boat, has all been perpetuated upon us because we feel that we've got to be as good as our neighbor Jones, keeping up with the Joneses. So all I want to ask here is to start to realize that through meditation, through the cleansing out of the body, we are allowing our frequency to come, come, come forward to, to fruition, and that includes the recalcification or the decalcification of the pineal gland by, by utilizing good water in our bodies. Now, this is a whole evolutionary process that we couldn't even begin to touch on if this call lasted another 48 hours. But what one is here is recommending that everybody do on this call is just to be open to something you've never been exposed to before and thus be enlightened. That's all enlightenment asks you to do. Oh, and by the way, discovery is seeing what everyone else has seen, but thinking what no one else has thought. That's a very profound statement made by Albert St. Georgie, who was a Nobel Prize. He's, inventor of, he's the one that discovered vitamin C. Are there any more questions? What, what are the things that we as individuals need to do? Well, stop claiming individual rights. Um, we're really not individuals per se. We're, we're all part of the one. Um, when when you're created by social mechanics or social engineering um, to believe that there is a constitution, they're, they're creating individualism. Okay, so you're created by law. Well, how do we redistribute that individual? We come forward to 1938 with case law and common law um, implicated by story diseases, and that redistributes you because now the community's rights or, or the rights of this group or this sect, they're superior to yours. So you have to fight for your rights by court process. They were stolen by legal process over here on the other side. And it's the same thing, how do you redistribute the, co the community? Well, when you implicate individualism by constitutional theory, how do you redistribute, you know, you, you can... You can create and destroy, and, and that's what they're doing. They're raising, R-A-Z-I-N-G. They're raising everything. You can create and destroy a corporation. You can create a corporation as an individual person. That's what they're called as a person. And you can destroy them with what? Environmentalism. You know, so now you have the illusion of a victim. Human beings are supposed to be the victim on, in environmentalism. Members, they're, they're stealing our air and they're harming the environment and everything else. The attorneys are pocketing that money too. As these corporations are paying millions and millions of dollars to clean up the air, when did you get your check? You never did. And it's the same thing when they implicated the FCC, the FAA, FDIC, all of these alphabet agencies. When did you get your check? These are there to protect you the FAA will find an airline for this, this issue, this issue, this issue. Where are those derivatives going? Now, if you look at the word derive, that means the profits derived from where? Derivatives are the profits of human production. We live on a farm. And so when you look at stuff like GDP, which means gross domestic product, and then you hear what that means. Gross means overall, domestic of the home product. That's you. That's what your family generates in revenue. So when the GDP, the projected GDP usually is around $800 trillion. Okay? And, and um, I know Thomas was just stating the actual numbers. 
but last year or this year in June they'll project project well that that was last month they'll project your production the GDP value as so much money like eight hundred trillion dollars. Well, how did they come up with that? Are you working? No. Are you paying that many taxes? No. Well, then what? Well, you can go Google debt derivatives, and that's a start. When you die, there's a whole bunch of money in your debt. And you can look at medical derivatives. When you get sick, there's a whole bunch of money when you get sick. Now, how do you get sick? Because every other biology on this planet, it doesn't have autoimmune disorders or diseases. Their bodies don't attack themselves. They don't have hypertension. They don't have diabetes. They don't have cancers. Our pets do now. Who's telling us what to eat? You know, in in Revelation, it's maintained that when the Lamb is able to open the book, then his wrath is made known. Now, we have a feed bag, and it comes from a place called the Codex Alimentarius, down through the FDA. And we call it nicely a food pyramid. But surprisingly, if you look at a feed bag for pig or for cattle, it looks the same. Why is our body attacking itself? You can go right now to the Codex Alimentarius and you can look up everything that's in your pantry or your fridge. And you can go through their index and see what's in your and what you are consuming. Um, the most interesting is benzoates. Everybody knows about um, Valium and Xanax. They know that there's such a thing as benzodiazepine. When you consume benzoate, sodium benzoate, calcium benzoate, potassium benzoate, um, what you're consuming metabolizes right away into benzodiazepine. Well, how? All you need is an oxygen molecule or two. You know, here you are breathing or you're consuming something else like an orange or whatever else it is. You're maintaining your body within soma theory. So you're not only aging, you're sleeping. And this is why it's so hard to get to some of us because there are They're all the way asleep. They're being drugged, and they don't even realize it. There's something more horrifying going on because we're metabolizing THC, and we're metabolizing uh, benzodiazepine, and we have young mothers out there that are testing positive for these drugs, and we're considering that they're bad or they've done something wrong for their children to be taken off of them. And all all they're eating is the things that the food pyramid says to eat. And what her doctor tells her to eat, the betterment of the baby. Child protection steals 200,000 children each year in the United States. And there happens to be 200,000 children in the child sex trade industry each and every year in the United States. These go through your legislatures. They go through the judges, the attorney hands, right on up to the White House. The Violence Against Women Act is a privacy law to protect pedophiles. The Crimes Against Children Act is a privacy law to protect pedophiles. Joseph Biden wrote the Violence Against Women Act. Patrick Leahy wrote the Crimes Against Children Act. Barbara Boxer promotes it. Diane Feinstein promotes it and you look at the Senate Judiciary Committee, and I want you to look very, very closely at the House of Delegates and what they are. They have full authority over the Bar Association, the American Bar Association. This is the Senate Judiciary Committee. Now look at that word, and I, and I, I need you guys to, to realize things here. You are taught and indoctrinated to believe that there is some type of separation of power in this country. What is a Senate Judiciary Committee. Why do you have an attorney, senator, president, an attorney, senator, vice president, 
and an attorney, senator, secretary of state sitting in the administration at this moment. There is no separation of power. There is no separation of church and state. Religion is not and does not have anything to do with God. Patronizing religion, patronizing something in exchange for protection is the definition of religion. Patronizing something in exchange for protection is the definition of democratic theory. Patronizing a captor in exchange for protection is the definition of Stockholm Syndrome. There is no difference between those three. You have to be aware of who you are and hold your authority. Nobody else can write your book if you are the author. No more allowing this. You know what's in the book. You can open it now. You have everything at your fingertips. You know what the Codex Elementarius is. If you go to your state laws, it doesn't say laws on there. It says code, statute, which is a statement of compulsion written into a book. You have titles and you have chapters. Those are parts of a book. What more do you need to see? It's right in front of your eyes and it's all written. Everything is there. Revelation says that you're going to wake up one of these days and cast that dragon out of the kingdom of heaven. And I pray and pray and pray that that day is today. Please stand up. Know your authority. Know who you are. You had a question? Yeah, look at the email from Danboard, Iowa. For, for yeah, I All right, I'm, I'm processing now. ready to file my complaint of breach of fiduciary duty. Write my mm-hmm. affidavits. All right. <clears throat> been suggested uh, file this to the public record in the county recorder, yes or no? What I would do is I would put your affidavits on as evidence because if you, when you look in blacks at appearance, um, if you apply something or declare something, you're allowing them to have jurisdiction over your person again. But if you put the affidavit on as evidence with an admission statement, you're you're not only compelling a judge, but you're disallowing them to have any jurisdiction over your person. Okay, so no 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 public record county recorder. All right. Yes, um, yes, you you do want to put it on the on the court, uh, but as evidence. You don't want to do it as okay. a defiant. Yeah, you don't want to be okay. a defiant. Okay. Uh, number two, uh, find better off file this in district court. Or in federal court on the judges? District court. Under Title 28 of U.S. Code, um, you file in the district court. The district court has the authority to, uh, for you to sue another state or foreign government that's against the United States, which is each county or each state. They don't have any sovereignty and they're without immunity now. Okay. All right. Uh, question number three of, of four. Uh, Saying to the Judicial Performance Committee of the State uh, Bar, which is the Supreme Court, uh, you mentioned about this uh, House of Delegates. Should they right. be notified too? No. Um, normally, I found that if you sanction an attorney, it, it's like trying to tickle yourself or spank yourself. It really has no effect. However, if you indict them for their crimes upon you, um, it has a lot of effect. And then the the dominoes start to fall because under um, attorney ethics and judicial canon, they have an obligation to you to maintain order and maintain justice. So um, once you indict one, they start rolling over on each other and cannibalizing each other, and that's what Jesus promised. Let the dead bury their own dead. Okay. I tried with their own county getting grand jury, and, and they just ignored it as well as the county. Right. And- Right, and that's where I found the ability of motions to show cause. You just do a motion to show cause, whatever crime they've committed, and you become the prosecutor. Um, you you compel the public acts, public law. And I just indict them under U.S. Code. It's just a lot easier. Um, what I found is, is I made a mistake in the Boston Diamond. Um, I wrote that thing. It was 54 pages long. However, I put in some mis- misdemeanors in there. She was facing 80 years consecutive, However, she pled down to eight years because I wrote the misdemeanors in there. I suggest that anybody who is indicting them don't write any misdemeanors and don't allow them to plead down to a lesser charge. 
If you don't put okay. them in there, they're not going to be able to plead down. Okay. Uh, last question I had, uh, putting, getting a copy of the judicial performance bond and making a claim against the insurance company. And that no, um, what you do is you, right, after you, after you indict them, uh, the bishop holds all the land. The bishop holds all of the um, ecclesiastical clerical benefits. And what's happening is they, I mean, that that's what you're dealing with. So if you go into a local court and ask for the um, other assets, you're not going to get it. But if you do a writ to the bishop and claim the clerical assets, then you're going to get it because that's requirement under the Cestri K. Vi Act. And that's when you just saying, I have those writs. We, um, it's a writ of uh, fear of fascist de bonus ecclesiastasis. And you want to direct the bishop to let those goods be known and what you're doing is you're taking all of their assets, not just their one bond or two bonds. You're taking, uh, such as the MERS accounts, which is municipal employees' retirement securities. You want the PERS accounts, public employees' retirement securities. You want everything in the IELTS trust, which is a um, attorney uh, interest trust. You want everything under trust. You want everything. Okay. They have been right. kidnapping you. They've been trading you as a thing, as an object. Um, no more. Enough is enough. You, we need to start hammering them with teeth. And if you add me to Skype or, or email me in some way, then I'll get you the writs. And I'll show you what we've been doing. And, and I believe it. Uh, we're here at the resurrection of the Son of Man. I don't think that there's, nothing else is going on. You know, here we are revealing them for what they are and right. uh, <coughs> calling them on it. And I, and I believe today is a, is a beautiful day. Yeah, well, true spoke from Omaha has been quite helpful for me on that, so I'll, I'll be going through her to, to get to you then for that information. Thank you. All right, be well. Thank you, sir. No. Thank you. Hey, was, can, can was, no, Cammy. Uh -huh. Cammy, it seems as though they're just RICO. No, no, it's not interstate. Um, what they're doing is international trade because they're, even if um, you're in one county and another county is trading you back and forth, that's international. It's not interstate commerce under RICO, and that's how they got out from under it. So what you want to do you. is you actually right, charge them with harming you, the person, um, or you, the human being. But but those are all there under public law under U.S. code. So in other words, it's no less fraud. It just doesn't happen to be RICO because of the process. Absolutely. Yep. Thank you for that. Very nice point. Hey, Tammy, can you hear me? Uh-huh. Okay, this, this is James. I, I just had a quick question. Uh, what what do you know about Bivens' actions? Who? Bivens, B-I-V-E-N-S. I, -E -N -S. A I haven't, I haven't studied it yet. Okay. Basically, there was an action brought against six unknown agents. All right. Well, I'm known actor. Yeah, basically, a Bivens action is one that is produced uh, from uh, an an officer or someone acting in a in a capacity of an officer when they step outside the bounds uh, of the the law for their specific office. Then they become first. Then they become personally responsible, and you sue them under Bivens action for their personal responsibility to the um, the harm that they've caused to you. I just Absolutely. Wonder, I just wonder and if it, about that. No, and see, I don't claim um, any statutory law. I already do that in the motions to show cause because if they're harming you or injuring you in any way, they're not acting in their official capacity anyway. They're not adhering to the public trust. So that, that maintains that they're without immunity no matter what. So when you go back to the foundation of anything, um, I'm not sure if the Bivens Act, it sounds like it's statutory. Um, but see, what Congress had done in, uh, gosh, it was 2009 or 2010, they nullified our ability to go after them for um, the uh, honest services, honest fraud doctrine. And so they were taking away, and that, that's what made me find these things, like the, the admission statements, because it's so solid. You, you can't, there aren't any loopholes in it because it's the physics of a thing. Well, I don't, I don't adhere to any statutory. Let me, let, me, let me ask you just quickly. Uh, um, 
Are you aware of the fact uh, that according to our law, there, they, we do not have any judges in the United States today? Absolutely. I mean, if you look at the 1789 um, Judiciary Act, that, that put everything into commerce. I mean, it, that one, if you, if you read that one, it's sick. You know, here you are, and you can be in um, whatever state you're in. And say you're in Arizona well, and... Well, well and, con uh, contemplate, contemplate that idea with, with the Bivens action, which, which, you know, entails, you know, you, 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 can, you can actually, you know, sue someone, you know, take an action against someone... Who absolutely. Has, ...who has operated outside, of, you know, the, the laws of, their, of the office. Absolutely, uh, but... And, and so, they, um, so they, we're looking. We're looking at ways here. If we're able to perfect them amongst ourselves, where right. we can draw up certain, you know, documentation and be able to oh. you know, uh, file it properly, where we could actually have some positive action because uh, absolutely of these ideas that you like that you're bringing forward and whatever. So. Right, um, and I didn't go on that. I didn't know about that act until just now. But if you look at my um, uh, motion to compel judicial boundary or abjuration of the realm, that's what that is. You're either going to be a judge, or you're going to abjure the realm forever. You sign here on the dotted line and deny that you're a judge, then I get your courthouse. And it's that simple because that's that's all the way back to the physics of a thing. Yeah. You know, and in that motion, in the motion, I'm telling them that they don't have the ability to aver or practice law, because according to judicial canon, judicial canon maintains a judge or may, creates a judge. And if right. the if the judge walks outside of judicial canon, they're no longer a judge. I mean, it's sim it's simple. You are either are or you are not. And it's the same thing. You can do the same thing with um, um, child protection. If they a social worker only has immunity if they're protecting children. If they're a pedophile, they're always a pedophile. So you step outside of that box, they're without immunity no matter what. So I'm not going to compel the bounds of a, of a social worker because they already know their bounds. However, in a court of law today, because they're created out of commerce and private acts, a lot of these judges, I believe that they might be just puppets for these attorneys, and they have no idea what the, function, the actual function of a judge is. Because when you, you read... They're, they're absolutely. They're Absolutely. That's all they and, and, right, and they have to be compelled to be, either they're going to be a judge and uphold the public law, which is God's law, or they, they can just leave and I'll take over their courthouse. I don't care. Whatever happens to them happens. You know, Revelation yeah. tells me that I, I don't have any fear. I walk only according to the word of God. So whatever happens, happens. It, it's not us who's hiding um, beneath the mountains praying that they crash down upon them. It's not us. You know, every yeah. once in a while we have one of our angels with one foot on the sea and one foot on the sand. But that's just a question that they're asking. You know, I don't, I, I'm so scared to get out of the sea of commerce. You know, I'm not sure if I should go this way or this way. What about my Social Security? What about welfare benefits? Well, you're either in the sea of commerce or you're out. And, and the parable of Jesus Christ walking on water, what happened? He was walking over the sea of commerce. Yeah. He wasn't involved in the Sea of Commerce. He had nothing to do with commercial activity. He wouldn't you know, have to do with it. Tammy, that document you just mentioned, the boundaries of judicial, is that in the Davidson, or is that the Johansson, or is that the boss? Uh, no, it's the, um, I think it's, um, it, I have like three of them on my script. That there would be the urge motion to compel judicial boundary. Um, I think there's the one in the Shulin case. Um, but yeah, I, I can send that to you in a little while too when I get back online if you need me to and, and then get it out to the group or, or whatever yeah. but it's just you can google it um, motion to compel judicial boundary or abjuration of the realm the books that I mentioned like the um, uh, treatise on mortgage hypothecation and pledges those books can be found on, on my Facebook page I use Facebook as a teaching tool um, I'm just Tammy Pepperman over there on Skype, I can send you everything. I've got anything that you need um, as to per law or whatever um, for your own research. Um, you can reach me at T. Pepperman on Skype. Um, my email address is TammyK23 at Hotmail.com. And a lot of my documents, I haven't updated in a little bit, but a lot of them are on um, my script account. Again, it's 
just Tammy Pepperman, and then Amber and Colin have have been just amazing, and and um, Cynthia has been amazing about trying to uh, save me time and put my files in another location, which is Solutions, the number four, the Innocent dot WordPress dot com. And they also have um, archives of other calls and things. And um, Cynthia has been so amazing. She's been putting things together in the right order. I, I don't, I'm not a very good secretary. <laughs> so all of my stuff, if you, if you go to my blogs and whatever, it's all erratic. But Cynthia has been helping me in so many different ways to put my files and, and the um, archives of the calls together so that, that they're actually um, a semblance of order rather than <laughs> All right, Thomas, I hear you trying to chime in here in, uh, again, so uh, go ahead, go ahead, Thomas. Okay, I have a couple of questions here. Mm -hmm. On the, the notice of forgiveness, uh, in paragraph 3, it reads through the absolute forgiveness, I forgive pension, insurance, and retirement plans. Uh, that appears to mean that a party who would do that not, could not expect to get a penny from a retirement after being on a job for, say, 30 years or 32 years. Um, it is not, not the proper interpretation. Those, those those assets are estate assets that need to be turned over to the party who is the donor of the right. labor who is entitled to all the assets, rights, title, and interest to those proceeds. Right. And in the forgiveness document, what you're doing is you're forgiving yourself as the debtor again. So you're saying, no, you're not going to use me anymore as the pension schematic. However, when you come in as the executor, what happens? You're the executor of that estate. Those are estate assets, are they not? Yeah. So you just come back as the executor and, and um you you after that you make those orders because you're the you're the only administrator of that estate. No the judge can no longer administer. Tammy, in regards or aspect or in respects to the notice of appointment of executor and the notice of forgiveness of the debt, once we have a book and page number, how and where do we implement that status to bring forth the, the to the public or to the party who who needs to be notified that that actually exists on the public record? You would use the reference number. You you want to keep the original. You're going to get the original back, and then you reference those documents where they're located at to whatever corporation or individual you're speaking to. So you okay. just reference the, the reference number. Basically, uh, in the event of uh, you know doing an executor letter saying that uh, your paperwork is found abandoned and uh, please reference uh, filing number blah 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 in regards or aspects to the position as the executor of the state, I hereby uh, request, uh, or I hear, I hear him by returning these abandoned documents to you, govern yourself accordingly, et cetera, et cetera. Right. And, and not only that, if you look at the private action acts of commerce that have been implemented against you, uh, you'll see that 26,000 males in the U.S. are not committing suicide each year, but they're being murdered. And what's happening is that under, such as the ERISA Act, which is the employment Employee Retirement Insurance Securities Act. Um, what that does was the minute you have a divorce decree, which is a qualified domestic relations order, or quadro, mm -hmm. the minute you have one of those, your retirement assets are no longer held in trust at that trust. Under ERISA, they transfer over to the municipality. So those assets are in the municipality. However, your quadro that the judge just signed or signed years and years ago, girl, that hey, quadro hey, said that that hey. divorce decree, the quadro, oh, no, no, that's okay. You're a girl. that thing says that your ex-wife is your surviving spouse. Now, when you're killed, when you die, that's when she finds out she's not a spouse. Where does that money go? <laughs> it's unclaimed and it's and it's maintained at the municipality. So... So your death is very, very important to these people. It's a it's a dead peasant policy, and those funds are now abandoned, which are claimed by the by the state. Absolutely, and it's claimed by the same judge that signed a quadro or a fallacious quadro that said that your ex-wife is your surviving spouse, knowing that she is not. 
Okay. She can never another, be your surviving spouse again. I have another question real quick. On the motion document where we've got a place for the autograph, after the document is autographed by the party who's going to be filing it into an ongoing case, a case, would seal the it. pardon? You want to seal it after that. Because that's a that's not just a motion, that's also an order. You're right. coming upon you're coming upon a motion. So you're moving the court based on the evidence to find them guilty of whatever you have evidence of. The minute really? your evidence is on court record, the judge is witness to that crime occurring because he's witnessing the evidence. Yep. So that motion to show cause is also the order, so you need to seal it with your seal. With the embosser. So now I want to make sure that the people realize on this call that you're not, it's not recommended that you use a thumbprint, that you need to get an embossed seal that has either your name as the executor or Thomas Ford of the House McFadden, uh, Society of Sojourner, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I put out samples uh, from the gentleman who was so kind to provide a great service and a great quality of work uh, so people can obtain those, those, uh, those seals. And because, you know, I've seen some documents that were on the other uh, chat room where these people signed their document and then put a thumbprint on it, which to me is just sort of like negated it based upon the principle that that is a franchise, which you talk about very adequately, and that that franchise has no authority whatsoever uh, because that's tied to the title directly to the crown. Right, until it's obliterated as a franchise for right. So until that franchise is obliterated or you tear up that stock certificate, you know, literally um, you want to seal and emboss it. And the other part of that is do not, do not let that deed be, be countered in any way. And what's going on if you look in Black's Law Dictionary at the word counter deed, you will find that any time you have an article that's notarized, or sealed in another way with a private seal, another private seal on top of yours that is no longer valid. It's voided. Wow. I, I, could, have had a nice, I could have had a nice vacation on Hawaii with all the money one has spent on notary fees, notary uh, stuff in the last 15 years. Another question, another question real quick. The reparative injunction, that goes after they do it. Let me ask it. Where does a, a, a reparative injunction go? And um, the document Well, that one repairs you to your original state. So, so you have um, prohibitory injunction prohibits an act. Okay. Imperative repairs you to whatever state you were. Um, you have preliminary, which acts almost like an ex parte. Um, you don't have to give the other party um, due process uh, on the preliminary injunction because you're asking for a dot based on an emergency basis. Okay, uh, good. Perpetual lasts forever. Um, Kia to met means uh, because you fear. So it's based on prior acts. And when you go in there and, and say you keep getting arrested, 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 keep up bonding out, what you want to do is, is um, ask for a reparative, prohibitory, uh, perpetual, preliminary for the emergency and Kia to met because it's already happened in the past. And then you lay down the evidence of those things occurring and you're going to get your injunction. The reason we write out the full injunction is that if you file a restraining order or use their forms in any way, they're generating revenue out of the Violence Against Women Act. So it, it, it defeats the purpose of trying to shut them down because they're going to be paid for um, punishing themselves and each other. And when you use, uh, when you don't use their forms under um, private acts and acts of commerce, they're bleeding, they're hemorrhaging, and, and that's what you have to do. You cannot fund them as you're holding them accountable for what they've done. Do not fund them. Do not give them any more um, ability to hammer us or steal our kids or kill our grandparents or kill our parents or steal, steal our inheritance. Don't, don't fund them to do that and, and um, use your own, own way, um, our own documentation, our own way of filing according to their law, according yep. to the law. And um, stop using their forms. Anytime you use any of their forms, you're funding them. Now, another question is that document, the uh, reparative injunction, as well as the uh, theory fasciitis de bonus ecclesiastics, have no place to autograph it. Those two documents get the seal, and then, of course, the stamp on top of the seal, the, the ink pad seal, to raise it up and make it seen on the paper. Is that correct? 
Right. As long as you seal that document, that's coming from your house to the bishop. Um, it's. I love how you say that. It's called uh, Fieri Fascis De Bonus Ecclesiasticus. And all you're doing is you're doing a writ to make the goods known, um, the clerical goods known. And again, you do not file that in the case. It, that one is an absolute um, original and closed writ. And on the close, you, you don't give anybody knowledge of what you're doing. You just send it right over there to the bishop. Um, go ahead and, and tap on the House of Lords a little bit and tell them you want your stuff. Mm. Now, in regards to... Uh, people who are holding a bar license or coming after you to attempting to irrigate, alienate, and plunder the assets of a registered vessel, um, should that attorney be named just his name, the first and last name, cap low case, or all caps? And or all caps. A, a all cap. caps. And what you want to start doing is you want to start mailing them documents in all caps, first, middle, and last if you can. Um, part of the way that you generate revenue is being posted by the Postmaster General. Each time you, you accept or, or get anything out of your mailbox, you're assuming the fiction and you're being held under a taint because you've committed a felony because you're assuming a fictional name that is not yours. You're dealing with crown property. So anything that you take out of the mailbox that has your, your last name on it, um, your first, middle, last name on it, what are you doing? You're, you're accepting a fraudulent thing. You're accepting and assuming that fictional name and then that's how you're being held in a taint. So now turn it around. Start start mailing all over the place. Mail these attorneys. Put it in their first, middle, last, all caps. Um, do whatever you can to start posting them. Post okay. Them. Another, Not another. just indicting them because they're, yeah. they're, now it's it says in Revelation that's what's going to happen. You know, they will be killed as they have killed. Well, we were all murdered or killed with the Cessary KVI Act when they said that we were no longer alive. Now it's the same thing. Turn it around. We don't ever have to lift a finger. They are required now to be the dead thing, the thing of commerce. Let them be. Now, uh, another another um, question here is that uh, uh, the, the temporary mailing location, that, that needs to be founded at, at a postal location, i.e. a post box, or can that be an actual place where someone is, is inhabiting? It can be your place where you're uh, residing or whatever, as long as it's always a temporary post, and you never, ever, ever accept anything with the first, middle, and last name on it. Your proper name, according to Black's Law Dictionary, is only your first and middle name. The crown owns the last name. Okay. Very good. That's very good. Now, the other issue is that we're going to discuss tomorrow morning is regarding these land patents, and I'm not even going to go into that tonight. But I was going to just see if there's anybody else that has any questions. Um, I need to get going. My phone's almost dead, and my charger's I do almost too. dead. I do, um, too. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it's getting late back there. So, uh, James, is there anybody else in the queue that has a question? James? Well, let me check real quick here, and I'll find out. Um, Thank you. Yeah, uh, is there an approximate price for that embosser or the seal? Or? Yes, the the price is about. Uh, hold on a second. Um, the uh, I sent that around to a, a bunch of people. The um, the embosser is the large embosser is sixty five. The inker blue, which is uh, plus a small ink uh, container, which has some ink in it, lasts to probably five years, and a priority shipping comes to about, oh, someone just Skyped me. It comes to about 105 Federal Reserve note debt instrument dollars. They also had one at, I think it was Office Depot or something the other day where Kurt got his, and I think it was like 42 something. So shop around and, and see yeah, what happens. Me, what, what, what we're talking these prices and stuff, there's something I, I you know, I, I've looked I, uh, you ran into lately. I, I want a question here. You can go to uh, something like Office Depot and have right. this stamp made. It just it just says seal. That's all right. it says. It says seal, and right. you can you know you can use and and crimp it over your document in the area where you you need it uh, to right. be 
built and and that seals it and it doesn't require that you have a a fancy elaborate you know you know fancy you know Illuminati design or whatever crazy thing on okay. it or whatever you know and it's just a seal and and okay. I'm told that that and I understand that that is, that is is uh, equally efficient and effective. As, right. as long as it, as long as you claim it's yours, you know it becomes your seal. You are the authority. Once you take your authority, that nobody else can take it back from you. Right, and once you put that, as long as you put that raised seal mark on there, and you claim that as you know as, as showing that you know that that's your seal of authority, well then, who can argue the point? And and right. that, and so you you don't have to spend. Hundreds and hundreds of dollars, you know, for something that you can just, you know, go out and spend twenty, thirty dollars for down, and uh, just get a seal, uh, you know, something. Well, there's probably about maybe three hundred manufacturers in the country that manufacture seals and embossers, and I'm sure. not by any way, shape, or form trying to promote one individual man uh, or or his work that he does. I, I would recommend that everybody go find out, them, get the best price. And if they got they get something they liked and they can share it. All I'm saying is okay. convenience. You asked me about what it was and I just gave you the answer. I have now okay. gotten four seals done. I'm sorry, Tammy, go ahead. Oh no, 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 I was just agreeing with you. No, oh, I, I and I, I am too, Thomas. I, I and I appreciate any information that you, you know, bring forward as, as to where uh, these can be done. I was merely saying that um uh, just just a stamp that says seal. I mean, you know, right. and it creates a, a raised, embossed area on that uh, on the document uh, that that is um, used uh, across a signature or whatever. It's a, yep. as I understand it, is as effective as any kind of a you know um, specially designed type of seal. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Tammy, I have one other question. When we're naming somebody, like uh, somebody who is a commissioner of a a commissioner of a department uh, on a state or in a state, because they're in a state, like the commissioner of the of the whatever, we're going to name him in his capital letter name. And do we put down office of the commissioner of the Department of Highway Patrol or the whatever? I would put both down. So you put his personal capacity and then his official capacity or unofficial capacity, whatever he was acting in, and then he har but he harmed you both as the commissioner and as a person. So you want to nail him both times. Okay, great. So that would apply to somebody who's pretending to be a judge. You would list his name first as an, an individual and judge acting for the uh, Contra Costa County Superior Court, State of California. Right. Supposed to act as a fiduciary and trust. Now, when it's the judge, then then you run into all of the larceny by trick and everything else because that judge is supposed to be fiduciary and trust. That's not just a, a, a position where you're getting him outside of his person. You're actually going to do a third on that one because he's also, um, it's called a legal compensation. And once you charge him for a legal compensation, they seize his assets right away. Oh, that's a good thing. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm balancing between running my automobile, plugging chargers in here, and everything else. Right. Okay. We'll get it. Uh, when you first got into all of this, you know, we you were, you were trying to help you men, and you know, uh, that were being screwed in the courts and that, and you, you, you've, uh, you just got a whole different perspective from from that. But I know of right. you. That so many, you know, quote unquote, women do, you know, uh, even as a woman, you you uh, you have a uh, understanding or, or, or comprehension or, a, you know, a, uh, empathy. I guess I should say would probably be the better word with with, right. with men out there that are, that are dealing with with situations where there's been some kind of a problem, you know, within the family and and. Uh, it always seems the, workplace. The, men, the men really get, you know, the, the shaft on a deal. And, and, you Absolutely. Know, you, you, you started 
in all of this from that perspective. So, you know, I was, I was, uh, you know, from, from what I understand anyway, and, and I was just hoping, you know, you, you share some of that, you know, uh, you know, before you ended it. And I was hoping you'd kind of bring some of that in earlier, you know, when I, you know, I was looking for some kind of introduction, but <laughs> to me, that's an important part of, of what you've done and where you've gone. And, right, because uh, at first, you know, you you look at it and and you see all these men being falsely accused, and it 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 isn't rare. It's it's absolutely rampant. It's it's not only rampant. Um, I sent you a, a link to the policies and procedures at the Department of Justice, and what they're doing is they're telling um, law enforcement judges and prosecuting attorneys, if you're arresting too many females. We think that you're being biased. Let me teach you something. Because if you arrest too many females, we're going to take your special drawing rights from you. That is feminism. That is feminism. This is misandry. You have you have policy that's engineered to have you falsely accused. These mandatory arrest laws are to nail you. They're to, to, to do nothing with the female. The, the, these females are, are not only beating my head in as a female. The, the reason the statistics don't say marital violence, they say domestic violence and intimate partner violence, is because females are getting their head beat in by other females. You're not doing it. But if you believe that you're doing it, if, if you believe that other males are doing it, you're going to pay the predator to protect you. And females, if the truth were known, we wouldn't pay anything. I mean, I sent you um, in Skype. I sent you the um, the uh, policy or the. I mean, it's an agenda at the Department of Justice how they're teaching uh, law enforcement judges and and prosecuting attorneys if they do not follow policy, if they do not arrest the male, if they arrest too many females, they're going to lose their funding. And yep. so the following procedure, they don't want to lose their special drawing rights from the International Monetary Fund. And that's what we're dealing with now. And, and, and the reason I do what I do today is, is finally I come to the point where um, you realize what the concept, what was the metaphor of removing the firstborn son? What was the metaphor of killing all the firstborn sons? What is it now? What is the metaphor of crucifying Jesus and here we are. You're still being crucified. You're still being removed. However, you're removed by false allegations of being a pedophile. You know, and that's that's even better for Caesar. Because if you're removed and you're killed at birth, you don't have any productive value. However, if you are allowed to save and save and save and you buy your house and you invest in this and you own your cars and you own all these toys, then you're falsely accused you're going to redistribute yourself according to Burrito's rule, and the attorneys are going to wind up with all of that vested wealth in their hands because you're defending yourself from the false allegations. And it's just right because they have evil over there falsely accusing you. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, you the know progress- progressionists have been, have been pushing this agenda since the, the early 1908, 1909s, and it started in the public school system. With the you know the whole indoctrination, I mean it's it's evident. So, so absolutely. I, I I'm sorry I have to go. Uh, I've been up since extremely early this morning, so I apologize. I, do too. I apologize. I've got an early me. morning as well. Yeah, Be well, we, brother. Yeah, we have an early call tomorrow. Okay. We do. All right. Yeah. Love you, brother. Be well. Thank you. Do you want me to be at ten instead of nine thirty? Yes, please, because it's late. <laughs> okay, very well. 10 a.m. it is. Thank you, everybody, all for right. being a call. Thank you all for, for being a call and being in, in attendance and being present. Thank you so much. Remember, discovery is seeing what everyone else has seen, but thinking what no one else has thought. Have a good night. Shalom. Be well. Be well. Uh, can you give any case numbers uh, where we can do a little research and find out, you know, uh, what what her ideas ha, have brought forward any kind of wins, you know, when it comes. They, and to, all of the to, documents that are up, they have the case numbers right on them. And then, um, like I said, uh, the Boston Diamond that was Patricia Boss. Um, 
a lot of the ones, uh, there's other ones that they have gagged as well. However, um, you can look for uh, <laughs> attorney suicide, little things like that. And I couldn't figure it out for the longest time that they were invoking the Geneva Convention. And I would indict an attorney or a judge and they would be just killed automatically. And it was like um, natural causes of you're sitting in your car and you just sprout a bullet hole or or you're uh, walking, that one legislator out in uh, New Hampshire, he was walking through the dump naked and just tipped over naked or tipped over dead. And you you really got to look and, and watch how they're cannibalizing each other because it's absolutely disgusting. Uh, when we went after Rick Perry, he, dro- he dropped out of the, the running for the presidential candidacy um, because he was called out as a pedophile. Um, he's down there. We had uh, outed the Plano, Texas ISD uh, and the Plano, Texas Police Department. You know, one of the cases, uh, a teacher had given the children um, uh, STDs. The children were treated for STD through the uh, Department of Health and Human Services, which, of course, uh, Rick Perry is traded as the Department of Health and Human Services as well as the General Counsel and the Department of Transportation. When we started putting the heat against him, they arrested Joy Dobbin. Joy Dobbin has since disappeared because of these fucks. He's just a kid. Um, sorry for my language. Uh, but those are, those are, everything is documented. Everything is, um, the case numbers are on the filings. Um, I don't think there's any filings without a case number on it that I have listed on script or solutions for the innocent or on my Facebook. Well, great. Well, um, why, why don't you, uh, once again, if you don't mind, but before we close this up tonight, um, go ahead and, and uh, give, you know, all the information you can, uh, you want to or whatever, uh, as to where people can access, you know, any and all of your information. All right. My script account is just Tammy Pepperman. Uh, Facebook is just Tammy Pepperman. Email is TammyK23 at Hotmail.com. Uh, Skype is T Pepperman. Um, and I think that's it. And you can add me to Skype. We do jurisdictionary classes all the time, usually throughout the day. Uh, we'll throw whatever together, uh, everybody gets together in small little classes. Uh, we're, we were having them larger classes, but it wasn't working out very well for me. But um, So now they're smaller classes. Uh, you just start asking questions and we answer. Uh, when you add me to Facebook, please send me a message because I've got so many. I'm getting uh, about 40 contacts a day. And if you if you send me a message, then I know you're there, and then I can put you wherever. But in the message, just tell me whatever issues you're dealing with, because we teach um, IRS issues. We indicted the IRS in in March. Uh, they are Northern Holdings and Trust. Uh, they they've been under indictment with the equitable estoppel. We recorded that right in the. Uh, it, there wasn't a court case. We recorded that in at the county recorder's office, and they dropped the lien within 24 hours. So. Um, all of this is all available on my Facebook, uh, Scribd, Solutions for the Innocent dot WordPress dot com, um, and uh, and again Skype all the time. We're we're usually there, and just get a hold of us, and and uh, we'll go from there. 